Thanks, Ralph. Right, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Mike Brown. I'm from a business called ETFSA, Exchange Traded Fund South Africa. I'm not related to Simon Brown. You can see that from uh, the hairstyles. I mean, <laughs> if, it, if he was my son, he'd have a proper hair, haircut. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, we're in the same business. And you heard Simon saying, well, ETFs, Exchange Traded Products, are the way to go. Um, certainly they should be a big chunk of your portfolio, so I'm going to talk about those. And uh, both for individuals as an investment that you can look at uh, in building up your own uh, wealth and your own uh, investments over time, but also how applicable they are to investor clubs and stock fills. So that's the, uh, that's the title of the address. Now, what are exchange-traded funds or exchange-traded products? It's the same term, ETP or ETF, same term, exchange-traded products, exchange-traded funds. Well, they're, they're shares, they're securities that trade on the stock exchange, just like any company. And now most of you, as you know, you can go and buy shares in a company, you can go and buy shares in African Bank or ABSA or African Rainbow Minerals or Anglo-American. What you then do is you own part of the profits and returns of that one particular company. And that's what a security is or a share is. When you're buying an ETF, what you're buying is a share that trades on the stock market, just like any other share, but uh, gives access to a portfolio or a fund of shares. So all a portfolio is, is that it's a whole group or basket of shares. So your ETF, instead of giving you just access to the returns of one company, gives you access to the returns of an entire group or portfolio of shares. And that portfolio of shares typically is an index. So what's an index? <laughs> an index is what the JSC uses to measure the performance of the top companies on the stock exchange. So if you're talking about, say, the top 40 index, that's the top 40 shares out of about 500 shares that's listed in this Johannesburg Stock Exchange, and the JSC measures how those shares perform. You know, what's the return on those top 40 shares, and, uh, and how much the price of those shares goes up and down on a, on a daily basis. In fact, they calculate the index every 15 seconds. So that doesn't mean there's one bloke they're calculating, it means they use computers and so on. But you can buy an index, or you can look at an index, as a way of measuring the total return of the market. So let's uh, unpack this idea of what's an index. <clears throat> That's the top 40 index. And you'll see there's 40 companies there, alphabetically, starting from African Rainbow, going down to Investec, and those of you can count say, well, that's, that's only 20 companies, so there are 40 companies, it's page two, and it goes all the way down to Woolworths. So that's an index. And what that index does, it says this is, if we measure the performance of those top 40, the biggest companies on the stock exchange, it actually determines 90% of all the trade on the JSE takes place in those top 40 shares. So that's giving us a very good proxy for the returns of the market as a whole. Now you'll see that there's a, a thing called market cap weighting. Yeah, and that's a percentage. And what the JSE does when it calculates the index, it says, well, some companies are bigger than others, like MTN, NASPERS, and South African Breweries. I mean, that makes beer. That's a very important company. So uh, <laughs> as all the blokes know. I mean, you've got Woolworths here, which doesn't do much. It sells shoes and stuff, but I mean, that's, that's a lot smaller company. But if you now look at that index, and if you were going to invest 100 Rand in that index, and you wanted to replicate that index completely, you would put 10,26% of your 100 Rand. 10 Rand 26 into SAB Miller, and let's say 8 Rand 88, 8.88% into NASPERS, and your portfolio would perform exactly the same as the index. And that's all an ETF does. An ETF manager goes and buys that portfolio of shares, any money he's got, he goes and just buys those 40 shares in exactly the the weightings and the percentages that the JSC stipulates, and in that way he replicates the market. So if you buy an ETF which tracks that index, and you can buy the Satrix 40 or the RMB Top 40 or the Nedbank uh, Equity Weighted Top 40, what they'll do is they'll buy those 40 shares, and your advantage is that you just go and buy one ETF, but you now own 40 companies. So, I mean, that's fantastic. It's like buying a box of chocolates. You open it up, and there's 40 different chocolates in there, and they're all yours. You don't have to share them with your wife or whatever it is. They're your chocolates. <laughs> For the woman, you open a the cupboard, there's 40 different pairs of shoes in there. 
uh, well, the bloke's a fridge full of 40 different types of beer, but uh, whatever. So you, when you buy an ETF, you own a little bit of each of those top 40 companies, starting from African Rainbow, going all the way down to Woolworths. So that's a bargain. Huh? How do I invest in the stock market? Do I go and buy 40 different companies and try and select which ones to buy, or do I just go and buy an ETF that does it for me? And you all know <laughs> that, I mean, if you buy a goodie bag that's got lots of stuff in it, I mean, that's great. That's always a good bargain. And that's what ETFs are all about. They give you access to an entire portfolio of shares. So the case for an exchange-traded product or exchange-traded fund is that you buy one ETF, but you own a whole basket of shares. Now, a big advantage is you only pay once. <laughs> You're only paying stock brokerage charges and other charges once to buy 40 companies. If you had to go and buy those 40 companies separately, you'd have to pay 40 times charges. So it's a bargain. <laughs> it's a good deal. <laughs> you pay once and you get a whole stack of stuff. And that's all that ETFs are. So they're designed to give individual investors and stock fills, clubs, investment clubs, access to different portfolios of shares in the most cost-effective and easy way possible. Just to unpack the costs a bit more, if one looks at what the total costs of running ETFs are, this is an annual basis, um, and this is what we call the total expense ratio. What is the cost to run those products? An exchange trade of fund in South Africa, the average cost is 0.33% per year, or 33 basis points. If you look at a unit trust industry, the average cost of running a general equity unit trust is five times that cost. So when I tell you that ETFs are very cost effective, they are. <laughs> They're one fifth of the cost of running or buying a unit trust, for instance. And you can buy low brokerage schemes, and I'll talk about ETFSA, which uh, give you access to ETFs very cost effectively. And the other thing that's great is if you don't have to pay tax if you don't want to. <laughs> Because the ETF managers already paid tax in buying the underlying portfolio. STT is effectively VAT. It's a securities transfer tax that you pay for buying a, a financial asset. But as the ETF managers already paid e STT, you don't pay it. So if you go and buy individual shares, you've got to pay 0.25% tax every time you buy a share. You don't do it when you buy an ETF. So the whole rationale for ETFs, they give you access to a whole portfolio of shares and by giving you access to a whole portfolio of shares, they diversify your holdings, they reduce your risk, they reduce the volatility, which are all important factors in investment. But the other important factor in investment is don't pay costs. <laughs> and uh, most of you are young, particularly the ladies, but some of the old blokes that are here, I can tell you that the costs you often pay on your retirement annuity fund and all the rest of those big managers, you're paying anything from 5 to 10% per annum costs. <laughs> and that means that your performance, investment performance, is getting massively eroded. You're not doing that with ETFs, 0.33% costs. And we'll unpack what it costs to buy those products. Now, the other thing that's interesting with ETFs, you'd think, well, if you're just buying the index, and the index is the average return of the market, because the index measures the price of every share that trades during the day, and there's sometimes 20 billion rands worth of trade every day in the JSC. It measures the average price at which all those shares trade, and it gives you the average return of the market. Now, is the average return good or is the average return bad? Let's have a look at the numbers in South Africa. This is the actively managed unit trusts, and they give us numbers on a daily basis. So we can go back over the last 20 years, and let's see how many of those actively managed unit trusts that track or benchmark the JSC All Share Index were able to outperform that index over time. And over 20 years, only 10% actually beat the index. And if you go back over all the periods, 10 years, 7 years, 5 years, 1 year, you'll find that, on average, only 20% of those active unit trust managers were able to beat the index. And of course, the guy who beat the index this year doesn't actually beat it the next year, because the volatility of performance is quite high. So you've got an 80% better chance of outperforming the professional managers by just buying an ETF, buying an index, because that's all an ETF is, it's the index. <coughs> So ETFs give very good performance. So you heard Simon Brown saying, and Warren Buffett, who's the world's most successful investor, his advice is to anybody, a long-term investor, just go buy an index tracker, go and buy an ETF. And uh, buying ETFs doesn't mean you're going to underperform. 
It's very difficult to outperform the index, particularly in South Africa. We don't have time to discuss why, but there are a number of issues that make it quite hard to outperform an index over time. So you're getting quite a good deal when you buy an index tracker. Now, this is quite a busy slide, but really here I just want to show you that there's a whole series of different people now issuing ETFs from ABSA, which has new funds and new gold and different brand names, through to Sonlum, which has Satrix. Most of you have heard of Satrix as a, as a brand name for ETFs. I started the Satrix business what, in 2000, so uh, uh, that's been the most long-lasting product. If you want to buy international ETFs, you buy them through Deutsche Bank, DBX Trackers, which is the third biggest ETF manager in the world. And you've got Standard Bank, Standard Liberty, Investec, all the way down, Nedbank. So all your big banks in South Africa are issuing ETFs, so there's a, quite a variety of different products. And the size of the industry, the total assets under management, is now over 100 billion rand. And four years ago, it was 16 billion rand. So this industry is growing very, very rapidly. And that's a worldwide phenomenon. The fastest growing retail products in the world are exchange traded funds, exchange traded products. And the same thing's happening in South Africa. So you've got a whole variety of different products that you can choose. But let's try and make that reasonably simple. If you want to buy ETFs, either as an individual in your own name or for your stock fill, your investor club, and you pick, let's say, one ETF. And as I say, there's 70 of them. But let's pick Satrix Indy 25. Satrix, issued by Sunlom, now owns the Satrix business. Indy is the industrial index, so there's no mining shares in there, there's no financial shares, there's no banks, insurance companies, just industrial companies, and the top 25 industrial companies in South Africa. And this is the top product in South Africa. Over the last five, seven, and ten years, it's the number one fund. It outperforms every single unit trust in South Africa over that period. And you put a thousand rand a month away into the Satrix Indy. And these are actual numbers up until 10 years, because this product's now been listed since 2003. After a year, that 1,000 Rand has grown to 13,000 Rand. After three years, to 57,000 Rand. Four, five years, to 124,000 Rand. After 10 years, this is as at 19th of June, it's up to 422,000 Rand. So a grand a month, which you can probably afford, <laughs> grows to 400,000 Rand over a 10-year period. And if you left it there for another 10 years, and lots, most of you are young enough to do that, that then, because you've now got a lot of capital, and your money compounds, that's now worth, after 20 years, 4.5 million. <laughs> so you want to be worth 4.5 million, just get used to putting a grand a month away into a low-cost unit trust, or even better, into an ETF. Because as I told you, that's a fifth of the cost of a unit trust. And that's all you have to do to become wealthy. <laughs> Just keep your money there working for you. Because your money compounds. If you want to double your income, you've got to work twice as far, hard, or employ twice as many people. But if your money's sitting out there growing it, that's a compounded growth of about 27% per annum. Your money just compounds. One rand becomes two rand, becomes four rand, becomes eight rand. So it's far easier to get your money working for you than for you to work harder. <laughs> or get the wife out to go working and you, you know, sit at home and just watch the money grow. <laughs> but money is a very important factor. Two things happen of important money. One is keeping it there for a long time, allowing it to compound. And the second one is making sure your costs are low. And ETFs are ideal for that purpose. You may say, well, we're an investor club. We don't want to put all our eggs into one basket. Let's now put some money into different types of ETFs, into different sort of asset classes. So what we've got here, and sorry, I'm only pointing at one board. I should probably point at this one as well. Though. Let's change that. <coughs> um, I want to be in domestic equities, South African shares, so I buy Satrix India, and I put a thousand rand a month in there. And I want to now buy a foreign ETF, so we buy DBX Tracker USA, MSCI, Morgan Stanley Composite Index, so that's the index, USA. That's the top 600 shares in America. So I buy that product, I own a little bit of the top 600 shares in America, Microsoft, Google, Yahoo, General Motors, whatever it is, I own a little bit of those top 600 companies. And I now want to have some complete diversification, so I buy a listed property index. These are the guys who run the shopping centers, Hyde Park and v and Waterfront and built all these buildings here in Santon outside the Cow Train Station, put some money in that. And I want something very safe, so I want to put some money into government bonds. So I put a thousand rand a month into RMB. This is the inflation bonds, saving government inflation linked bonds. And that 4,000 rand a month spread amongst different asset classes. So if something goes wrong in the equity market, well, the bonds will continue to 
appreciate because inflation in bonds go up with inflation. As long as inflation is rising, the value, capital value inflation in bond will go up. And property has a completely different cycle to normal equities. And that 4,000 rand a month, after three years, 200,000 rand, after five years, five, 400,000 rand. So your investor club can be putting some of the cash that they've got spare into that. And after five years, you can, you've got 10, 15, 20 members, you divide 400,000 rand up amongst them. <laughs> And as you can afford a bit more money, you'll start putting extra amounts away on a monthly basis. So you can run a portfolio across different asset classes. And this portfolio means that you, you now own 25 of the top industrial shares in South Africa, 600 of the top shares in America, 22 of the top property shares in South Africa, and nine, a portfolio of nine South African government bonds. So you've got a nice spread diversified investment, and that's all you've got to do. And you don't have to put a thousand rand in, you can go 300 rand a month into each of those. Or you can have a bigger or smaller choice of ETFs. But you can run, and that's what clubs are all about. You're going to sit down there, have your meetings, and decide where do we expose ourselves? What type of assets do we want to buy? And ETFs will give you exposure to all those different asset classes. If you want to become really sophisticated, and a lot of stock fells are like this, particularly the ones that have been around for some time, you can say we'll pick our own strategic asset allocation. 90% of long-term investment performance comes not from stock picking and buying which shares should I buy, but just saying which asset classes should I be in. So we can say we want to have, be 40%, you see I've switched to this side now, in South African shares, 30% in foreign shares, and 30% in income-bearing assets, which aren't going to grow as fast, but which will protect us if the stock market falls. And let's put together a portfolio that does that. And there we've got Satrix Indy, so we're going to put 40% into domestic equity, we're buying a financial index, Absis financial index, we're buying an overall index, RAFI index, we're putting some money into DBX Tracker USA and DBX World. The World Fund is the top 1,600 companies in the world, across 25 different countries. And we'll put some money into inflation in bonds and to property, and that portfolio would have given us over the past three years 24% per annum return, and 21%, nearly 22% per annum return over the last five years. Let's compare that with the unit trust industry. 90% of all the money in unit trust now goes into these balanced funds. The average return of the low equity unit trust, 11% per annum, and even the more flexible funds that quite aggressively try to outperform the market, 15%. But your little ETF portfolio, and let's say you're putting a couple hundred bucks into each of these, is giving you 21, 22%. So you can outperform even the professionals in the market. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what investor clubs are all about. You go there, you, you talk about it, you perhaps go and ask a financial advisor to give you some advice in putting a portfolio together, which is something ETFSA can do for you, and you can run your own portfolios using ETFs cost-effectively and performance-wise very nicely. And don't forget these ETFs are negotiable securities, so you can sell them anytime you like. All right, to set up an investor club, these are all the documents you need. I think that you've had some talks about that already. If you come and visit us outside, our table's right outside there, we can, we can give you some uh, facsimiles of exactly what sort of documents you need to fill in and sign to set up an investor club. Most of you have done this already. The critical thing in an investor club is to have a bank statement in the name of the club. Why would you use ETPs? Well... It's a diversified portfolio. You're buying a lot of shares very cost-effectively through ETFs. Very low costs, low investment minimums. And this is where ETFSA comes in, because you don't have to have a lot of money to invest in ETFs. You can invest from 1,000 Rand, or from 300 Rand a month if you want to do debit orders, or do both. And dividends are paid four times a year by ETFs. We can reinvest those dividends for you, or we can pay the dividends out into the investor club's bank account, which then gives you some money to, in order to disperse your costs and so on in the club. And you can sell your shares once you've made some profits and pay an annual bonus or bonuses every couple of years to your investors. Want more details? The ETFSA website, www.etfsa.co.za, and there's a window on the front page called Investor Club Stock Fills. Click on that and that'll give you all the information you need. If you need further advice, you can come and discuss, discuss it with us or get hold of me. So the advantage of using ETFSA's investment platform, uh, we'll accept investments from 1,000 Rand, lump sums, 300 Rand a month, debit orders. We automatically reinvest dividends four times a year. Our total charges for you using the platform are 0,7% per annum. Um, 
as a maximum charge, and that's deducted over 12 months. So if you invest 1,000 Rand, we'll charge you 7 Rand a year. <laughs> what do you get for 7 Rand a year? <laughs> but you can invest 1,000 Rand for 7 Rand a year. You invest 10,000 Rand, it's 70 Rand a year. We'll facilitate third-party investments, quite important. If you want to start putting investments in the name of your children, uh, grandchildren and so on, we can do it. Ideal for investor club stock fills. We only specialize in ETFs. We can give financial advice. And for investor club stock fills, we typically give advice, even though the portfolios are quite small. Last thing I want to leave you on, and I don't want to particularly pick on any of the stockbrokers that are here, but if I was going to invest, and this is just an example, 5,000 Rand a month, in five different ETFs, and I went to an online stockbroker, it would cost me 300 Rand a month and 4,500 Rand a year. If I did this through ETFSA, it cost me 43 Rand a month and 300 Rand a year to invest 5,000 Rand times 12, 60,000 Rand. That's at 0.7%. So the cost advantages okay. and using a platform. Same thing with unit trust. You go to a list platform, Question. ETFSA effectively runs what's called a link provider platform, okay. and therefore facilitates you being able to Invest in any of the ETFs you like, as flexibly as you like, change your debit orders, change your lump sum amounts, sell your shares from time to time, and we'll do it at very low cost. So we're not going to be eroding your club's assets, Stockfell's assets, because of high costs.